welcome to Edison TV. I'm Michelle Livings and I'm here to explore the significance of the latest deal announced by Nasdaq listed Vivo Power. So first, the facts. Vivo Power, the world's first corporate decarbonisation stock, has struck an exclusive five-year binding agreement with Toyota, the world's largest car maker. Toyota Australia is purchasing Vivo Power's kits to electrify its iconic Land Cruiser vehicles, turning chassis originally destined to be diesels into emission-friendly EVs. I think it's fair to say our analysts are impressed with the traction this could give Vivo Power. Launched in August 1951, the Land Cruiser is Toyota's longest-selling car. By 2019, it had sold more than 10 million units and currently adds roughly 400,000 units to that total every year, around 25,000 of which are bought in Australia. The decision for Toyota to partner exclusively with Vivo Power came after the Japanese car giant tested the technology for two years in the harsh environment of the Australian mining industry. And it brings with it a parallel to Tesla. In 2011, Elon Musk announced a $100 million deal to supply Toyota with batteries and motors for the RAV4 sports utility vehicle. All of which means Vivo Power is partnering with, rather than competing against, the world's largest car maker. This could have the effect of pulling in the gravity of Toyota's market penetration, brand power and servicing networks to assist Vivo Power's growth, while negating the need for the heavy capital investment other EV players are making to build a complete vehicle platform from scratch. Plus, the deal suggests considerable barriers to entry. Rivals with plans to sell electrified land cruisers anywhere in the world now have to compete against Vivo Power, which can point to its product being the only Toyota-approved solution. For context, it's worth remembering that as recently as 2019, Vivo Power was a standalone solar power business and failing to excite the market. But that was before majority shareholder and turnaround specialist Kevin Chin was appointed as CEO and brought in a new management team. So, to get a better understanding of the Toyota deal, we've invited one member of that management team, Matt Carr, Vivo Power President USA, to join us. Hi, Matt. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. Matt, can you outline in more detail the deal that's been signed between Vivo Power and the world's largest car maker? Thanks, Michelle. We're super excited by this. Uh, basically, we've just entered into a, uh, an LOI as a precursor to an MSA that we expect to have agreed and signed in the next 60 days. The terms of that LOI are the exclusive uh, distribution of Tembo kits for the Toyota Land Cruiser uh, by Toyota for a period of five years uh, with a two-year option. Um, and we're very, very excited by this. The, the largest off-road uh, distributed vehicle in the world uh, using our kits for electrification uh, in net zero uh, carbon applications is very, very exciting for us. Yeah, it's fantastic. So what other deals has Vivo Power announced recently? We've been super busy in the last six months. We've got a distribution strategy ac across the planet. Uh, so far, we've concentrated on those areas that are heavy in the mining industry. So our first uh, transaction was with uh, GB Auto in Australia, a very highly regarded uh, aftermar uh, aftermarket fitter. And uh, that was for 2,500 kits over five years. Uh, we then followed pretty quickly with an announcement in the last uh, couple of days, actually, with uh, Access up in Canada. Uh, same style company, uh, again, focused on mining uh, for over 1,600 kits. And uh, we have an LOI in place uh, with Arctic Trucks up in Scandinavia, uh, which we expect to conclude in the next uh, 30 days and that's for a further 800 units. Uh, we're still focused on the other heavy mining uh, areas on the planet, which is uh, Africa, South America, uh, and Southeast Asia, and uh, we are in deep conversations there at the moment. Wow, so very, very busy. How does this all fit in with Vivo Power's current strategy? So uh, about nine months ago, we pivoted from just being a solar developer and using our core assets 
to address what we saw as some pretty big problems. And a lot of our customers were really struggling with it. So within Vivo Power, we have uh, uh, two major businesses uh, in the uh, electrical area, electrical contracting area, uh, J.A. Martin and Kenshaw, and their expertise is in building large commercial cell scale solar fields uh, with uh, microgrids and storage. And so we're basically pairing that with the number one, if you like, leading uh, 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 vehicle, the Land Cruiser from Toyota, uh, and our electrification of that through a new uh, purchase in January from Tembo, and we're providing a total solution. So it's basically the generation, the storage, the distribution of a ruggedized package for light commercial vehicles uh, for our very large mining customers. Matt, that's great. Thanks for walking us through that. But of course, for investors, this leaves open the question of Vivo Power's valuation. Fortunately, Edison's senior covering analyst, David Larkham, has just issued an update note which includes a view on that. So I'd like to welcome David, who joins us in the studio to discuss Vivo Power's prospects. Hello, David. Hello, Michelle. David, could you walk us through what you value Vivo Power at and why? Okay, so Vivo has some profitable operations in Australia, but key is obviously Tembo, the electrical vehicle business. Now, it's in ramp up over the next few years, so we'll start to get profit and cash flow coming through you know, a few years down the line. So we use a discounted cash flow to value that. Um, and in our initiation note in March, we put a valuation of $19 a share. Now, interestingly, a key part of that is, is what the discount factor is. Uh, and at the moment, we're using 13%. But as the risk reduces and things like Toyota coming on board, obviously a big part of that, that risk factor or discount factor, sorry, will reduce and that will promote the valuation over time. Right. So can I ask, what, in your opinion, is the significance of the Toyota deal? Yeah, well, the auto manufacturers around the world, or the traditional ones, are all trying to design and build a range of zero emission vehicles. Uh, and obviously the powertrain is a critical part of what they do. Um, so for uh, somebody like Toyota to go outside their internal ecosystem uh, and use a relatively small player like Tembo, I think is a big endorsement of Tembo's technology. What else should investors know when considering the stock? Yeah, I think there's three other things. Firstly, management uh, are heavily incentivized. They own over 50% of the stock. I think secondly, uh, Vivo is B Corp certified and has been for a number of years. Uh, lots of investors are looking towards ESG, uh, low carbon, and so obviously it's a big part of that. And then finally, I think there's the scale at $120 million market cap. You know, it's beneath the radar screen for, for most people at present. Uh, once we get announcements of people like uh, Toyota coming on board, uh, I think that will change. David, thank you for your view. And that's all we have time for today. If you'd like to know more about Vivo Power, download Edison's latest research. Or if you'd like to be the one asking questions, sign up to an upcoming investors webinar. Just click the screen at the end to register. Thank you for watching.